Hey everybody, this is Christian and in this video I'd like to show you my process of how I'm keeping notes about everything that I learn in IT and how I write my technical documentation. Because this is a topic which is often overlooked yeah? and even I was guilty in the past. I was actually someone who barely took notes. I often just installed stuff on my home lab or typed in any commands that I found on Google. But trust me, if you are in IT and you are learning tons of new things every day, at some point you just need to keep track of all of it and just need to to write it down somewhere. And that is precisely what we're doing in this video. I want to show you my favorite tool, Obsidian, that helps you to organize a personal knowledge base. It uses a standard language called Markdown, so that allows you to format text, add images, create tables, yeah, even code blocks with syntax highlighting. But before we start with technical documentation, I want to say a few words about today's sponsor, Teleport, which is a free and open source access proxy that you can use to securely access all your IT infrastructure, like Linux server, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications, and even remote desktop. The best is it's also completely free and open source. It has a community version you can just download and run it in your entire home lab. Or if you'd like to use it in your company, Teleport offers many professional features for auditing, single sign-on, and more. Just reach out to their team. You will find a link to their website in the description of this video. Okay, so before we jump into Obsidian, first a few basics about Markdown and why I'm using it for all of my notes and technical documentation. So I know there is a pretty good chance that you already know what Markdown is, but in case you don't, let me just give you a quick summary. So when you are writing a text document, Markdown is a so-called markup language that you can use to add text formattings to your document. Similar to what you know from Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, when you want to make your text bold, you want to add a heading or insert a link. But unlike in a program where you click buttons to apply formattings directly to your text, Markdown is just a plain text file where you use a specific syntax to denote what the text should look like. For example, if you want to add a heading in Markdown, just add a hash in front of this text. If you wish to make your text bold, just put it between two asterisks. Or you can simply use dashes to create a list of items. And to turn the Markdown file that you create in plain text into something visible, you need to use a program so that converts it into HTML. In VS Code, you can just open a Markdown file and in the split view, you can see the HTML conversion of that even in real time. And just as simple as that, you can add many more useful formattings which are great for writing technical documentation such as images, links, and code blocks. Yeah, even with syntax highlighting. And that all makes it very useful to create good readable readme files, cheat sheets, project documentation, or even just simple notes. What is also great about Markdown, and that probably is a key reason why it is so great for IT and software documentation, because it uses a standardized language, many applications understand it, and it's very easy to import a Markdown document into a different program or turn it into a web page to publish it somewhere. For example, on GitHub, all the README files and documents that you see are usually written in Markdown language. And just like that, there are many other programs and services that understand and use it to form a text. For example, on Reddit, it's also the standard language for content, or Slack also uses Markdown in their messages. So it's really a wide used standard in technical documents and web pages for text formatting. And it's pretty easy to learn because Markdown, unlike HTML, is really just focusing on the most important formatting syntaxes. By the way, if you are interested in the full Markdown syntax, I've created a new GG document on my GitHub page where you can just look up all these different formattings. I leave you a link below in the description, of course. And if you enjoy my videos, well then give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would be really nice. And it's also helping a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So that's why I write all my documentation now in Markdown and I don't use any other program because it's just the best way to do it. And there are many Markdown editors out there that you can use for writing Markdown files and organize your notes or documents somewhere. And I want to show you my favorite program, which has uh, some very sophisticated features that go far beyond formatting. It's called Obsidian. And in my opinion, this is 
just the best markdown editor out there. Many people use it as a so-called second brain. So that basically means a knowledge base for everything that you know. So it's not like VS Code, just a comfortable editor for markdown. It's also helping you to organize documents with filters and search functions. It also supports tags, backlinks, and many more stuff, which is really impressive. And the best, it's free and you can use it on all systems, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. To start working with it, you need to create a vault. So this is like a storage for your markdown files. And what's pretty nice here, you can just open a simple folder on your PC and use it as a vault. So if you already have an existing project that you copied from another machine or maybe a Git repository that you cloned, you can just open it. But if you are starting fresh, you can also create a new vault, give it a name and set a location on your hard drive. All the markdown documents that Obsidian uses are just plain text files in this folder. And the vault also stores all the config data, plugins, whatever you change in Obsidian itself in a .obsidian directory. So it can be configured differently for every vault. And to back up the whole stuff, you just copy this entire folder and then all the settings, all the files, everything is there. And just to mention, there's also another service Obsidian provides, and this is called Obsidian Sync, that automatically synchronizes your vault across different devices. However, this is a paid option and not really cheap to be honest. It costs around $10 a month. But because Obsidian vaults are just basic folders in your file system, you can of course also use other tools to synchronize and back up your vaults. I already mentioned Git, this is what I use, but also other solutions like opening a vault on a Google Drive or OneDrive folder, they are also possible. So the only case where I believe Obsidian Zinc can be really useful is when you want to use it on mobile phones, because there it's sometimes a bit difficult to synchronize folders. Unfortunately, the mobile edition of Obsidian doesn't natively support OneDrive or Google Drive. But if you are like me and you're using Obsidian mostly for technical documentation or note taking of your IT projects, that's probably something you don't do on a mobile phone anyway. So using Obsidian together with Git as a storage is in my opinion the best way to do it. You can, for example, just create a free repository on GitHub, which can be even private if you like, and just clone it to your PC and then open this as a folder in Obsidian. This is how I do it. And I currently have three different Git repositories added as vaults, which I'm working with. So I'd recommend adding not too many vaults in Obsidian because switching between them is a bit annoying. To me, it makes the most sense if you just have one or two vaults and then you still can organize all the documents and subfolders. I can best show you that by opening my cheat sheets vault. So this is a Git repository where I collect something like a knowledge base about everything that I learn in my home lab projects. And I would strongly recommend building such a knowledge base, especially if you are working in IT, because you come across a lot of new stuff that you can't keep all in your head. For example, when I learn something new about a tool like kubectl, I'm writing down a short text that explains certain basics or lists commands that are frequently used. A few principles or patterns that I tend to follow writing such documents are, I firstly describe what is this about and then I create separate sections with headings and subheadings such as installation, short explanations, command references, whatever makes sense for this document. Uh, what's pretty cool in Markdown, if you have any commands or templates of code, you can put them in code blocks. And to start a code block, just type in three single quotes followed by the language you're writing this command in. So if you write an instruction in Python, simply type in Python. If this is a command for a shell, just use bash or PowerShell, depending on which uh, type you're using. Uh, close this code block with three single quotes and now you have a syntax highlighting for this entire instruction. And this is so cool and very useful for describing YAML files like this here or SQL commands like this here. You can also directly copy code blocks with one click in the top right corner of the block, by the way. I really can't say how much I love this function and always keep in mind, you can just upload this document anywhere else, for example, to GitHub or any other program or website because this is a markdown language. It's a standard and you can easily convert it into HTML without any issues and you have the same syntax highlighting and everything else without changing the format of your documents. But that's not all. Of course, markdown also supports adding URLs. So 
you, if you want to add a link to a more detailed instruction page or something like that, you simply start this with a square bracket, type in the link text, and then in the normal brackets, you just enter the URL and now it becomes a link. Or if you want to insert an image because you would like to add a diagram from draw.io or anything like that, copy it to your vault and then in the instructions just start with an exclamation mark. In the square brackets put the alt text or just leave it empty and in the normal brackets put in the URL to the image which can be a relative path in this file structure and then you got an image. Now this is how you start writing your documents or notes in Markdown. To be fair, this is what you can do with all Markdown editors, yeah, not just Obsidian. But let me show you something where Obsidian really stands out from other editors because if you build such a knowledge base like my cheat sheets repo or any type of note taking system, there is a pretty big challenge of organizing this stuff. So especially when your documentation grows because you want to find things quickly of course. And to accomplish that I have come up with a system that puts similar topics in folders. So like I have this one folder for applications, one for technologies like cloud databases, Docker and Kubernetes, or here is my Linux stuff, my macOS stuff, networking, tools, Windows, whatever makes sense to put in together. But what you can also do is, and this is not a Markdown standard, this is really just an Obsidian feature. You link these topics together with backlinks. Here, for example, we have a documentation about traffic, so that's a reverse proxy for Docker and Kubernetes. And in the description, I've added two links to other documents explaining what these terms mean that I mentioned. So that's done by adding a double brackets and just link a different document by name. For example, if you want to go to Docker, you can then just click on it and this takes me to the markdown document of Docker. Or here I have added a documentation about K3S, a lightweight Kubernetes implementation and I've split the different installation instructions in other markdown documents. Obsidian also has a really nice graph that's like a map of all your documents in your vault represented by dots and it connects all these documents that have backlinks to each other which doesn't only look incredibly cool, <laughs> but it also helps you to kind of visualize your knowledge base or whatever you're documenting and helps you to keep an overview of everything. And that's good to find sections where you might want to add a few more stuff. For example, like here in my Linux section, uh, there are a few dots connected, but I know there's much more I would need to fill in. You could also use tags by adding a hash and then you can search for a specific tag with a query and it shows you all your documents. However, I'm not using that a lot for my cheat sheets because I mainly just use the backlinks and folders and for me this is enough to find everything. But it doesn't actually matter what I'm doing so even when I show you my style of documenting you should find your own style of organizing and building such a knowledge base. The main goal is again to find instructions easier and look up things. Trust me, it takes a long, long time to build such a knowledge base. And what's also sometimes hard to find out is what you have to write down and what you could skip because you don't always need a full explanation of every single program or command. In this case, I just add a link in the Markdown document to the official documentation or website. But some general instructions like guides, useful commands or configuration templates, that's what I think are worth writing down. So don't write too much stuff. Focus on the essential things that you would need to look for up and just add one or two sentences of explanation, maybe a link to a related document and that's it. That's how I built my knowledge base or cheat sheet documentation. If you now think, well, Christian, that's all nice, but it's so much work, I'm lazy. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys. So you can find this repository on GitHub. I leave you a link in the description down below. And you are welcome to clone this repository to your machine. Use it for a quick reference about things you might need. And if you like, I'm happy if you would contribute. So if you want to work together on this cheat sheet repository, that would be so wonderful because I sometimes don't have the time to write down every single command. I just write down most of the stuff that I come across. But to make it a really nice documentation, let's build something together here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop advertising for my own stuff. Feel free to use it. Happy if you'd contribute. Let me show you one more repository that I called docs. And this is a private Git repository I'm using for my internal project documentation in my home lab. So here I have added things like my IP address management. I just write down a table which devices have a static IP address in my network. Or I'm writing down services that I have deployed where I have deployed them and the 
URL to access them. That's always a good idea whenever you're working on IT infrastructure, even in home labs. At some point, it just becomes ridiculously complex. So writing down all of those things, like how is your network organized, are becoming more and more useful the more your home lab grows. Don't write any credentials in here. That's critical. So you never want to have usernames or passwords in any technical documentation. If you do that, I personally will come to you and punish you. <laughs> but you can, of course, just write down things that are discoverable in any way about your IT infrastructure, like IP addresses, machines, and so on. You can use tables in Markdown when you are dividing columns with a pipe. And the first row is always the heading. Between the heading and the rows, type in the same number of columns like in your heading, but fill them with minus symbols. And then you just start any your rows. And yeah, this is how you can build up a table in Markdown. You might feel this is a little clunky, yeah? Editing tables in Markdown isn't really fun. Some people might even prefer using Excel sheets for that. But here Obsidian is going to help us because it supports plugins. And this opens a whole new world for you guys. There are so many plugins written by the Obsidian community to enhance the functionality of this program. In the settings menu, where you can adjust general things like appearance, font, and so on, there are two important tabs for plugins. There are core plugins, those come from the Obsidian team itself and the community plugins. So these are untested plugins that everybody just can publish. So they are not really audited by anyone else in the community, uh, but you can look at the total installations count. So that is usually an indicator of how many people are using it and if the plugins are working. There's one specific plugin that is also the most popular one. It's called Advanced Tables. And once you install this and enable it, it creates a new menu point where you can toggle this plugins tool and here you have some really useful things for working with tables, like adding and removing rows, columns, moving entries up and down. So things that you know from something like a spreadsheet. That obviously doesn't make Obsidian an Excel competitor, but it can save you so much time working with tables. And just like that, there are many other plugins that enhance Obsidian. There are plugins that help you to do day planning in Obsidian, yeah, do time tracking or have a daily note planner. Even a Kanban board there's a plugin for. You can see there are endless possibilities. However, I need to say this is not what I'm using Obsidian for. I actually don't use many community plugins because I believe there are sometimes better tools for certain tasks that these community plugins try to do. For for me, Obsidian is undoubtedly the best markdown editor. I use it for all my note-taking and technical documentation of IT and software projects. And that's where it's absolutely the best tool for. But of course, this is all up to you how you use it. Maybe Obsidian fits perfectly into your day planning or time tracking workflow. I don't know. And that's what I like so much about Obsidian. It doesn't try to be the all-in-one tool for everything out of the box. Instead, it focuses on the important stuff and gives you the ability to write down your own plugins and customizations to make this tool what whatever you want it to be and i believe there are many of you who want to try it out and see how you can use it for your own organization and note taking or tech documentation i hope i gave you some inspiration and now i would really like to hear from you guys so what do you think about obsidian which tool do you use for note taking or documentation or if this is the first time you're thinking about taking notes at all whatever it is leave me a comment i'd really like to hear from you guys and as always, thanks everybody for watching. A big thanks goes out to my Patreon sponsors. You guys are just amazing and helping me a lot to make these videos here. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.